Hey folks, uh, this is the last, the fifth, final video for the van build. It contains things like building the lockers, covering the panels, kitchen units, all the little bits and bobs to finish it off basically. I'm um, sorry this this video has been uh, delayed quite some time, but I have had quite a lot of personal issues that I've had to deal with. Uh, I'm just getting on to it now because raining outside so it's giving me a bit of time to actually get in here and put it together i have actually bought another van and we've already made a start on it it's a black transit high top medium wheelbase correct that it's a, a medium top so that will be the next video i'm not going to do like videos all the way through it on how to like what i've done with this one I'm just going to do a video right at the end of the tour, so look out for that. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumbs down. It's up to you. Have a look, see what you think. Right, so the armor awning's turned up. Uh, it doesn't Well, it does come with brackets, but it comes with these for a T5. I don't know why a T5 is so popular because it's one of the smallest vans in the world. So we're obviously we're ditching them. Basically, we've bought a full lamp for this extrusion. Uh, it, it's sold by Free Army. Uh, we've cut it up into bracket sizes, and basically what we're doing is we're making up these brackets. We've got some owl brackets from. The Unistrut, which we're drilling a smaller hole in. Oh, that one's a bit close to the other hole. I think we'll bend that and redo it. But there's one that's done. We've drilled a hole in. We've pinned it to this extrusion. Sorry. <coughs> pinned it to this extrusion, and then that basically slots in that slot there. And then there's a pin that goes through this bottom bit, pins it in, and then that fixes to our roof rack that we've made out of uni struts. We're going to have one, two, three, four supports like that. Obviously, we've got to make these first, and then once we've made them, we can fit them on the uni strut, which is our roof rack, and then we basically hook our awning on that, fix it, Job done. Now you can see we bolted the brackets to the racking and we've got the awning off. What a day I've chose to do this. Absolutely peeing it down. As you can see, brackets are on there. We push that back now, screw it up from underneath. Four fixes on. That's getting nowhere, boys. And there you go. That's the awning out. I'm going to buy some uh, attachments what fit the actual leg to the body of the van. Right now, folks, it's absolutely hammering it down outside. So I've come back in the. I've done that awning, and I'm absolutely soaked. I've been in, changed my jumper, and I've come out now. The steel's turn up the box section to make the top lockers where I just store all my clothes. It's a 20 by 20 box section. Uh, I'll make a frame up like that, and then I'll make an upright, and that makes the lock, and then it's covered in plywood, which is then wrapped in the material. Uh, you might think, why are you using steel? It's heavy. The 2020 box section, the stuff that I'm using, is pretty cheap compared to aluminium. It's easy to weld compared to aluminium. And it's a lot lighter than you'd think. These, when they made up, are half the weight of a plywood cupboard that you would put normally up on the ceiling in your kitchen in the van. So... It's a bit misleading, I know it's steel, but it is actually lighter and it's a lot easier to weld than aluminium. Aluminium is quite specialist to weld. These, they're all 
butt jointed, pushed up tight, and then we'll use an arc welder and we'll weld it up, make sure it's all square, and then it's just to drill a hole through and it'll fix to the plates that I've put behind all the actual beams in the ceiling of the van. Get it all welded together and I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so the welder's come out. I have only got a cheap welder. It's a cheap bloody 100 quid thing from uh, Machine Mart. I've uh, welded that frame together now. Give it a bit of a clean up. It'll want spraying obviously before I uh, fix it. But then that'll be basically lined across the front, the sides, and then a board in the back. And then uh, fitted to the uh, roof of the van. Give me some much needed storage. So it's all made. Give it a coat of red amorite. Tight in with all the red stuff that we're putting in now. Uh, might need another coat. There we go. Alright, so now we've got the frame up. It's obviously got to be boarded and fabric covered and what have you. We can do all these panels now. Get all them cut, fabric wrapped around them. I'm a bit unsure as to whether to put one there or not, like I did in the last one. Just re does restrict headroom slightly, so we'll see. See when the mattress is on, see how much room we've got. Right, so we've just started cutting the boards. These boards, you just take a lot of measuring. Measure twice, cut once, and all that lot. Uh, get them cut, and then they're gonna be covered in like a two mil sponge and then the hessian material wrapped around them and then they screwed with screwed and cups. Got to do this side now. And then uh, starting look like something. Same again, round the uh, frame for the top locker. That's gonna have fronts and sides on it. They're gonna be covered in the same material. Uh, so give it a good old sweep out now. Built the step out. I'm gonna get some flooring down now. Obviously, because all the aluminium corners then will go on top of the flooring. Uh, I'll try and get this tape up. And then we've got some grey vinyl with a penny coin design that can go down on the floor. And then we can start covering all these panels. Uh, doing all the lining and the uh, kitchen can go in there. Little step in the corner. Start sticking some flooring down. Filled any holes in the floor. We're gonna, the liner's going to collapse in. Any little holes there, anything was fixed down before. We're using this grey penny coin lino up down with uh, well, contact to this year. Got Beppers helping me. Standing out on his phone again. Get the flooring down. Uh, so we've laid the lino down. It's all uh, contact adhesive spray. Ford commercial vehicles. And then it gets cut into place. I am absolutely shocking at flame flooring, but seems to be going pretty well. So you get that kind of finish. It's just a normal vinyl penny cone flooring, penny cone, penny coin flooring. There you go, all cut in. Nice. And then we've got this aluminium angle now. Let's go. On top of the flooring, up the corners of the boards, and also across the edge of the floor, like so. And then same again. Around here, where you can see the edges. Put an aluminium angle on the end, obviously, cut it around there, mitre it around the corners. Same again there. Should neaten it all up. Looking good, and a nice cut 
against the mark there. Starting to come together. Get these boards covered soon. Right, folks, floors down, all the aluminium trim's been done. Again, we used a real fine blade in the miter saw to cut that. It's been fixed in place and all the edges. Now we're covering the boards, all the boards that go over the, the doors and the around the windows and on the sliding door and what have you. You get covered in this foam, foam, foam. Uh, it's about two, three mil thick furniture foam. It basically gets wrapped around the panels. We staple it down. You end up with a panel like so. And then you can go around it over the top with your material. We've got this Hessian material. Cover that over it and then we fix the panels back and it's quite uh, quite a nice finish. I had good results with it last time. I don't know, I'm no upholsterer, so I'm not don't not sure if I'm doing this in the correct way, but whether that should be stuck to the board or not. But I had a good result last time I did it this way, so I've just proceeded to do it again. So let's work its way around and get all these covered. It should take some time. So, you cover him over it. If you're really finicky, you might want to iron the cloth. And then uh, fix him on with some uh, nice cups and screws if you've got any. Then you get a nice panel, which is uh, a little bit spongy and padded. Now, to do all of these. Best crack on eh? And there you can see one of the backboards covered with the window opening pulled down underneath. It's all just stapled. It's not neat underneath but it serves a purpose. Right, from come get the camper units. Uh, kitchen pod, like I said, uh, the, the amount of uh, tooling and what have you, and then the price of the boards. It's just I know I'm a carpenter enjoying it, but it's just not it's not economical for me to make my own. So I have this guy make me one on his CNC machine. We're just going to turn up now and go and get it. There you go, kitchen unit. Locker. Get home now and get it fitted. Should be the part. Right, so as you can see, still covering panels. Uh, the kitchen, I've picked that up now, as you saw, and it's almost fitted. Uh, we've cut all the the instruments or whatever you want to call them into the uh, top locker. That's fitted. Internal partitions. Base unit. We've added the power. Fitted the fridge, that's wired up now, that's working. Got drawers, chopping board that goes in on top of the cutlery tray. Uh, and obviously, just waiting for the sink and that'll be cut out. And then, jobs are good and on the kitchen. Uh, we've still got the uh, boards to cut for that overhead locker and then they're covered in this same material but all in all she's coming on uh, the, these ripples that you got and this material 
it's due to the screws twisting on the fabric and pulling on the uh, on the strands. If you slacken the screw off slightly, like I've done with this one, pulls it out. And then also, you can, it says fabric, if you want to, just get a steam iron and just run over it very gently and it'll get rid of all these little creases and ripples. And you should end up with one like that. Right, now come time for fitting the mattress. I've actually ordered a four inch mattress topper. It's been my phone. Thick enough for me that is for sleep on. But we've had to order a super king size and it's had to be cut down. We've had to cut uh, about 10 inches off one end because uh, a king size wasn't wide enough. So only five foot is it? So and it needed to be six foot wide. Uh, sorry, or six foot long and then so many, I can't remember what the dimensions were, but king size wasn't big enough. So we've ordered this out of memory foam, we cut it down with a, a carving knife, electric carving knife, it cuts it really well, so nice and straight loose the cut, and then uh, we'll basically zip the cover back up, sew, sew it back up so it's singing, I've cut the corners out for the pillars, and then we'll spin it round and it should fit in nice. Uh, easiest part. There you go, span round, fits like a dream. Be nice and comfy, you will. Four inches of memory foam. Right, so the sink's turned up. It's a Tetford. Uh, that's the, the number of it. Uh, it's quite a nice sink, it's all in black. Uh, it's come with a template, paper template. So we've marked that on the work the top. And we've just cut it out of the work top. We've made sure we situated the bowl where there's enough room for it. And then the cutout, I always use to make a table out of. Just uh, cut it out neatly without drilling holes. Use a circular saw as a plunge and then put some uh, edging around it and it makes a brilliant table. So there you go. The reason I chose this sink is because it's got proper clamps, which are basically a clamp and a screw, and they screw up and that bit clamps onto the worktop and it holds it tight. So it's not gonna rattle around like some of the Dometic ones do. And another reason I chose it is because it's black and it looks cool. Really nice sink. Dead pleased with it. Alright, so the lagoon table stand's turned up. It's been fixed. Some really aggressive south tappers to the B pillar. So it's really sturdy. And we've basically, like we'd said before, when we cut the sink out, we cut the sink out with a plunge saw so as we can use the cutout to make the tabletop. We've got some edging. So we'll route her out for the T and then knock the edging on the sink cutout, fix it to the top. And there we should have a table. We always put it on this beef pillar because it then comes out and we can have it as an outside table as well. It'll lower down. It does both. We'll fix it so as it's on the thingy position. So as it reaches over to both seats and that'll be the table done. So as you can see, we've got the cut out for the sink. We have cut it down slightly because it was quite long. The sink was quite long. We've took the router and we've got this cutter with a bearing on it. It's exactly, I think it's three mil and it creates that three mil groove around the outside. And as you can see, this knock on strip, just go around with a nylon hammer or a rubber hammer. Nylon's better because the rubber will leave marks. And just 
edges. Well, you should have an edged safety slotter, and it can be fixed to the base from another tabletop. Right, a uh, bit of a last minute touch. Me uh, chemical toilet looks a bit unsightly, so I've got some of these uh, off cuts left. So I'm making a box. There you go, there's the box fitted. Padded seat. Shit's there, helps me get on the bed. Still see the toilet, but I was going to put a front on it, but I don't have enough timber left, so I'm going to buy a full sheet to do that. Uh, quite happy with that then, looks alright. So, uh, a company called JR3DS. Uh, has kindly sent us some axle stands for the van but we don't want to mount them on the floor we want to mount them on the unwind rails so we can move them like, up and down and take them out if we want to so we've just got to make some plates so bit of steel I'll show you now some plates one shiny one isn't basically flat bits of plates with the old plug. Here's these lovely axle stands. They're actually 3D printed, that's their logo. That's also their logo too. It's JR3DS, you can find them on Instagram. They're 3D printed and then the collars are obviously different sizes for different axles, whips and the depths and what have you. They just pushed in, you can see one without there. There's the collars, a little rubber seal on to push them in and out. So obviously we want to put them in the unwind rail. So we've made a couple of plates where it'll fix to that plate there with a couple of bolts. Then we've got some unwind rail fixings, which will go through that one there. The stand will go on there. And then we've got a couple of thumb turns off eBay that will go on there and tighten on and then that will all come together. We've drilled these, uh, cleaned them up a bit and then we're going to spray them black. And then fix the stands to them and they'll just slide in the unwind rail. I'll show you that in a moment. There you go, there's the plates. Welded. With the mount bolted on, it's got the thumb turn and the uh, slide ready for the unwind rail. Go stick them in, eh? See how they look. Right, so got all the badges off, and I've given them a right good roughing off with some sandpaper because I'm going to spray them with some black spray paint it's uh, just a bed liner so you've got to rough them up because they chrome if you don't it'll just flake straight off so I've used some real like rough sandpaper and took the shine right off them so I know they still look shiny in this but they're nothing like they were so we'll spray them up wait for them dry and get them back on there you go, we've all had a coat now, we'll wait for that dry, give them another couple of coats and then get them put back on the van. And there you go folks, job done, van's complete, there was a few little bits done, bits added here, bits added there, just little finishing touches really. But that's it, that's a wrap, this van's done, this will be the last video. I'll be on to the next one. Really pleased with how this one's come out. We have actually already bought another van, bought a Ford Transit. So that'll probably be the next video. Now you can see we did add that second locker. Tally's absolutely brilliant when you're sitting watching at night. Put some bungee cords across the storage, stop things falling away. 
electric cupboard just looks awesome. That's why we left it on show. And then we managed to get some little clips, slot in the onion rails, hanging things up. That's it folks. See you again. Like and subscribe.